My hair currently is waist length. I never thought that I would have a waist length and natural hair. It has always been a goal of mine, but I never thought that I would actually see the day when my hair is to this point. So I'm really excited to share with you all what I've learned on my natural hair journey. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. My name is Tia B. In today's video, I am finally sharing my natural hair journey from 2019 to now. So I've got my coffee and I've got my notes. Let's go ahead and get into it. My hair currently is waist length. I never thought that I would have a waist length and natural hair. It has always been a goal of mine, but I never thought that I would actually see the day when my hair is to this point. Because what I can definitely say is that my hair has not always been this healthy and it absolutely has not always been this long. So let's go ahead and talk about how I got it here. I have actually shared a video before of my natural hair journey and I'll have that linked up above if you wanna check it out. But that was my journey from like, I think 20, 2005 to 2017 or 2014 I can't really remember it was like one of the first videos that I posted but today I really want to talk about things that have helped me get my hair from where it was to waist length although I did post that video I actually do kind of feel like it's important to give you guys just a little bit of background about my natural hair journey I first went natural in 2009 that's when I was also going off to college so I kind of just wanted to reinvent a new version of myself and I felt like going natural would be a great way to do that I attended an HBCU the illustrious Clark Atlanta University and and so I just wanted to do something different with my hair while I was there. However, <laughs> I still use a ton of heat on my hair. So my hair was what they call these days heat trained, which really means my hair was just heat damaged and did not revert back to its naturally curly state. It wasn't until 2013 that I decided that I was going to also cut out straightening my hair. So I was actually still straightening my hair like maybe once a year. But for the most part, I did not put heat to my hair. I was just doing styles that would help during my transition. So like twist outs, braid outs, things like that. I never big chopped. I only transitioned my hair. So I would get a trim every now and again just to get rid of those damaged ends. But I never did like a super big chop. Although I gave up the heat, I still did not know what I was doing with my hair. I was struggling. So I went to YouTube University, found some folks who had hair that was similar to mine, or at least I thought they did because at that time my hair was still pretty heat damaged and I thought what my texture was, it actually was not. So it took me that whole year to really start figuring out what was working and what wasn't. But still at that time, I didn't know what I know now. And in 2014, I wound up getting my hair dyed and I absolutely loved the way that that my hair looked like my hair colorist she did her thing like this picture right here it is still floating around on pinterest because people are using it for inspiration for getting their hair colored i'm still getting dms about it but let me tell you let me answer this once and for all for anyone who is watching this i don't know the color she used okay she came up with that color all on her own that's why she is a beast at what she does my hair looks absolutely amazing but i messed up because i did ask her like what should i be doing what product should i be using but because i was my PhD program on a PhD student salary I did not have the coins to upkeep my hair the way that I should have and I'm low-key mad at myself because I shouldn't have invested in getting my hair colored if I didn't have the money to keep it up but at the same time I feel like it allowed me to learn a lot about my hair and also I love the way that it looks when it was straight and curly so it is what it is since then though and through a ton of research a ton of trial and error I'm finally at waist length hair so let me go ahead and share with you what i have been doing to get here first i had to truly figure out my hair type and i'm not talking about the curl pattern you know the 3a 3b 3c 4abc all of that no that is just the type of curl you have like what your hair looks like when it is in its naturally curly state and it ain't gonna do nothing for you when it comes to figuring out what product you gonna use i'm gonna just be straight up like it's not really going to do much for you what you should really focus on and where my focus really lies these days are in these three things my hair's porosity my hair's density and my hair's texture so porosity refers to your hair's ability to absorb and retain water i have a low porosity hair and you can have a low normal or medium and high porosity hair my hair is low porosity which means that it takes a very long time for it to absorb water now what i have noticed is that whenever i'm washing my hair i absolutely Absolutely have to saturate my hair fully for at least like five to seven minutes before my hair is completely like saturated with the water with water otherwise my wash day routine 
it, it ain't gonna be it okay it ain't gonna be it <laughs> now depending upon your hair's porosity that will determine how long it will take for it to completely be saturated with water also because i have low porosity hair i really like to use products that have water as its first ingredient or other humectants like glycerin honey things like that next i had to figure out my hair's density and this refers to how many hair follicles grow per square inch of scalp i have medium density hair now i know it may seem like my hair is thick but i promise y'all it is not thick next was figuring out my hair's texture so you can have fine medium or coarse textured hair and your hair's texture refers to the width or the thickness of a single strand of hair whenever i hold a single strand of hair between my fingers i could definitely feel that it's there but it doesn't feel extra thick either so i consider my hair to be more on the medium coarse side the next thing that has really helped me on my journey to waste like natural hair is determining what my hair needs and with this i'm talking about protein versus moisture it's important that you maintain a balance between the two and some way that you can figure out what it is that you need if your hair is feeling really mushy or very fragile then you more than likely need some protein added to your hair care routine but if your hair is feeling really dry and it's just lacking elasticity then you probably need more moisture in your hair care routine i think it's really important for me to let you know that i do not decondition my hair weekly i know that you know when the natural hair movement was really up and booming which is actually really interesting thinking about the evolution of the natural hair movement, but I digress. <laughs> we were told that we need to be deep conditioning every week. Every wash day, we need to be deep conditioning. No, you need to listen to your hair because your hair may not need to be deep conditioned. You may just need you a simple rinse out. So for me, I have a weekly wash day routine. I do try to wash my hair at least once a week. Then I have a monthly wash day routine, which is a bit more intense. For my weekly wash day, I shampoo twice. Most times I'm using a clarifying shampoo and following up with a moisturizing shampoo but if i don't have a lot of product build up then i will just use a moisturizing shampoo twice and then i will use a rinse out conditioner for my rinse out conditioner i don't particularly have a favorite like there are so many that are my favorite so maybe i'll make a video showing all of my favorite conditioners shampoos things like that if that's something you're interested in let me know down in the comments and i'll get on that for you after my rinse out conditioner then i will go ahead and style it and my style just depends on you know what i feel like doing that day but i will talk about that a little bit more in just a second for my monthly wash day i will start out by doing a pre-poo treatment i also will sometimes do like a hot oil treatment or simply use a water bottle with some warm water in it to really really saturate my hair or when i'm in the shower that's really the best time to do this i would just let the water be my pre-poo and i'll just be in there detangling my hair with the water after that i will shampoo twice as usual with a clarifying shampoo and then a moisturizing shampoo and then i'll do a hair treatment if i need one so like sacred has a hair mask a reconstructing mask that i like to use whenever i feel like i need a bit more protein so i will use something like that and then then follow up with a hydrating deep conditioning treatment. And then once all that is said and done, I'll go ahead and style my hair. Now, throughout this whole process, I make sure to use the right detangling tools. I detangle my hair at every single step. My favorite detangling tools are my tangle teaser, my unbrush, or simply my fingers. So on my weekly wash days, when I'm not using a pre-poo, I will use my fingers while my hair is saturated and under the running water to go through and detangle my hair. Also with the shampoo of my hair, I will use my fingers to lightly detangle my hair. But while my conditioner is in, I will Either use my tangle teaser or my unbrush just depends on which one I have in the shower at the time both of them are really good the key with detangling is making sure that you take your time go slow because if you go too fast you're gonna rip your hair out I noticed like before I would just go in and like if I got to a tangle like I'm just ripping through my hair but now I really really take my time with detangling and if I come to like a really big tangle or not then pulling my hair down and kind of just working through that knot has helped tremendously and has really helped to save my hair next girl turn down the heat and <laughs> turn down the heat i love a scorching hot shower okay but i noticed that when i was using water that was too hot on my hair and really on my body too so this is applied to both my hair and my body I sh sometimes i still take a really hot shower but most times the water is warm especially though when i'm washing my hair if the heat is up too high you ain't doing nothing but just drying out your hair strands and obviously dry hair can lead to breakage so that's something that you definitely want to keep in mind whenever you're washing your hair i still keep straightening my hair to a minimum i'll straighten my hair like twice a year at the most and that's just because i want to avoid heat damage at all costs now that's not to say you can't get heat damage from straight 
straightening your hair once because if the heat is too high on your hot comb on your flat iron whatever you can get heat damage so you want to make sure that you keep in that heat low as well i'm actually going to be silk pressing my hair again soon so maybe i'll do an updated video not only am i keeping my straightening down to a minimum but also i'm using less heat when i blow dry and diffuse my hair as well to blow dry my hair i love to use my rev air i know it's a bit pricey i know but listen i got you with a discount goal it'll be down in the description box they also offer payment plans so if it's something that you really really want then i say go for it because i feel like it is worth the investment it helps to cut down on the time that it takes for me to blow dry my hair i also have to utilize less manipulation and less heat three things which can really help with maintaining your hair's health and in turn maintaining some length when diffusing my hair i like to keep the temperature around like a medium heat setting so that i'm not taking all day to diffuse it but also the heat isn't too high next i make sure that i'm using the right products for my hair earlier i mentioned that i have 3c 4a low porosity medium density medium coarse hair and because of that i don't like to use products that are super heavy i now don't really use butters in my hair i used to use them a lot back you know in the day before i knew any better but i will only use use them like occasionally now and it's very I'm very particular about the type of butter that I use I don't use shea butter or things like that and you know if that works for you that's fine I'm not you know saying it's bad or anything like that but what I'm saying is that it's just too heavy for my hair it does nothing but weigh my hair down so if I am using a butter then I will use one that's like more creamy in consistency but what I really like to use are like cream products so like the dew cream works amazing for my hair especially for twist outs I actually used it for mini twists not too long ago and I absolutely love how well it moisturized my hair my hair did not feel weighed down or anything like that and it smelled really good too for wash and goes I like to use mousse and gel or sometimes I would just use a mousse alone and I have been loving the AG care mousse gel I did a whole video on that I've actually done a video on all the products that I'm mentioning today but I love that mousse gel because it's like a combination of the two and you don't need to use a whole lot of the product to get great results and when I'm doing a protective style I will sometimes use a leave-in but I'm definitely using a cream so I already mentioned the dew cream but also the Irish Moss Styling Cream from Nature's Little Secret amazing for protective styles and then whenever i'm heat styling my hair i don't really like to use a lot of product on it so I, most times i'm using just the heat protectant the next thing that has really helped me get to waist length hair on this natural hair journey is to know when my hair needs a break i love a good wash and go okay and there was a point in time in which i was also trying a lot of new hairstyles but wash and goes have been like my go-to style a lot this year but constantly styling your hair in a wash and go can lead to damage because you're manipulating your hair a lot obviously you have to wash it and all the things but as you are putting the product in your hair you have to detangle break the product through separate however you do it it can cause a lot of manipulation to your hair and your hair just needs a break from all of that so i like to give my hair at least two weeks in a protective style my personal favorite protective style is mini twists that will at least give me two weeks worth of protection but i don't really like to stretch my protective styles out much longer than that because i need to cleanse my scalp like a healthy scalp that leads to healthy hair so you want to make sure that you are keeping with your wash day routine even if you have a protective style and now i will say that i have gone like a good month i did these small butt length knotless braids and i need to get my time's worth out of wearing them so i did stretch that style out for about a month but i definitely recommend that you keep up with like weekly or at least the bi-weekly wash days i did deal with postpartum shedding and around my hairline i still feel like i don't know my hair is not the same it has just never gotten back but also i never had like super thick edges anyway so i feel like where they are now i've actually come a very very long way and the way that i was able to maintain my length and just the overall health of my hair when i was going through postpartum shedding was wearing my hair stretch and that kind of goes back to wearing a protective style so I would stretch my hair and wear it in mini twists or any other style that I could do while my hair was stretched because I noticed that when my hair was in its naturally curly state during that time my hair was more likely to get tangled and was more prone to breakage so to help eliminate just those tangles I would wear it stretched the second to last thing but probably the most important thing that helped me on this hair journey was eating more nutritious foods so even now I try to eat things that are high in protein vitamins minerals like leafy greens I tried to find a lot of like plant-based protein sources, but our hair has keratin 
keratin is protein like your hair needs protein so i eat a lot of tofu i eat chicken every now and again my husband is actually plant-based so i don't cook like meat at home as often anymore but i'm still making sure to get like things that are high in protein in my body fruit vegetables all of those things you need them and since doing that i've noticed that not only has my hair become more healthy but my skin looks so much better as well now the final thing you gotta put hair health over hair length and you also have to have patience with this journey so if you have a lot of split ends go ahead and cut them off there ain't no point in <laughs> holding on to them dead ends and that goes for anything in life okay because you're not going to grow your hair is not going to continue well your hair will continue to grow because your hair is always growing but you're not going to be able to retain that length if the split ends are constantly you know creeping up the hair shaft because the hair is just eventually going to break off so what i like to do is i trim my hair I guess you could say regularly and what a regular trim is for you and for you know the next person may differ now what's recommended usually is trimming every three to four months i probably trim my hair closer to every five to six months just because my hair doesn't need to be trimmed as often and also if you're trimming your hair too often then you may not see all of that length that you have worked so hard to get but the caveat to that is if you're noticing that you have a lot of split ends then go ahead and just cut them off because in the end your hair is health is way more important than the length of it but if you put healthy hair first so a healthy scalp you're getting rid of those split ends you're using the right products and doing all of the things that i mentioned earlier in this video then you will ultimately start seeing that length retention happen so yes those are the things that have helped me get to waist length hair i honestly like i said because i think i said this before i cannot believe that i'm here like i've always wanted waist length hair i have just really wanted to see how long i could grow it there was a time where i thought i hit a plateau and i just thought my hair wasn't going to you know retain length anymore but I surprised myself and I have been able to actually retain length enough to wear my hair at waist length now I'm trying to decide if I want to try to keep growing it to try to reach like lower back slash tailbone I don't know because I've also been itching to cut it <laughs> so we are gonna see I'm going to keep implementing the things though that I've shared with you in this video and make sure that I prioritize my hair health so I hope this video was helpful if you have any other questions if there's anything that I did not touch on I did not mention make sure you let me know down in the comments I will do my best to answer it but with that said thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one Whew. all right it's time to go eat Girl's hungry.